In this problem, we have a block launched by a coiled spring. It's initially compressed by 40 centimeters from its equilibrium length, which I labeled with a dashed line at x equals zero. It has a constant of 100 newtons per meter. And this time, the surface is rough. So I have a kinetic friction coefficient of 0 0.2. I can go ahead and roughen up the surface a little. All right, so we're going to have friction playing a role in an energy problem. Let's go ahead and do the last one here. So I'm going to go ahead and get force vectors into my first diagram because I know I need the normal force to figure out the friction force. So I might as well prepare for that. Which reminds me, I forgot to say what the mass was. So I'll get that in real quick. Um, I had a mass of two kilograms on this. So I'll go ahead and put that in here, two kilograms. And of course, gravity is pulling down with a magnitude of mg. And the normal force in this case is just equal to mg. Uh, 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 newtons. Um, the normal force is equal to mg because there's no other vertical forces messing around with this problem. And my, my uh, kinetic friction force going to be given by mu k times the normal force. It would be nice to have a number on it in the diagram. So I'm just going to do that real quick. 0.2 times 19.6. And I get 3.92 newtons for that. 3.92 newtons. Okay. Now my first question is how fast is this block moving by the time we get back to the equilibrium position? And it's not as simple as just saying the spring energy turns into kinetic energy because friction has been draining some energy out of the system. So I'm going to go ahead and write down my energy conservation equation generalized for a non-conservative force to be doing work. And that's friction. And my initial energy, so nothing is moving, so I just have 1 half. Kx initial squared, the spring potential energy. And then the work done by friction from here to here is going to be a negative Fk, and then I guess I'll just say like delta x. All right, and that's all going to be equal to the energy in my final state, which is no spring potential because it's, it's expanded back to its equilibrium length, just kinetic energy. And then I can start to plug things into this. So I end up with 1 half k x initial. It doesn't matter that it's negative because I'm going to square it. That's 0.4 meters squared. So getting into SI units there. Friction force has a magnitude of 3.92 newtons. And it's acted through a displacement of 40 centimeters. My mass is 2 kilograms. V is the only unknown left. So after I smash these numbers, um, I arrive at a final speed of 2.54 meters per second. So to smash those numbers, I would just combine everything on the left side in a calculator. Those twos canceled. Take the square root of that number, and you've got V. All right, that's the first question. The second question is how far does this thing slide before it comes to a stop? If there was no friction, it'd just keep going forever. And I'll just call that x. Uh, but there is friction, so it's going to slide to a, st <coughs> a stop. And there are two ways that you can handle this. The first is to take your previous answer and say, OK, there's no spring involved anymore. It's just my kinetic energy. Uh, for this block moving at 2.54 meters per second is all being sucked out by friction. And it's totally fair to solve the problem that way. I think it's a, a little more unusual for students to just go back to the beginning and, and solve it this way, where I have my energy state in the beginning, and then I compare that to this final. So I want to illustrate that just because it might be a little less intuitive. So I'm going to view this as my initial state. 
this as my final state. And it doesn't matter what happened in between. So this is totally legitimate to solve it this way. So I'm going to go E initial plus work done by any non-conservative forces is equal to E final. And my initial energy is just the energy in that coiled spring. And then work done by non-conservative forces, that kinetic friction force is always that same 3.92 Newton's magnitude. And I'm going to back up a second. And I'm going to use a delta x. Uh, what I just realized there is that my delta x for the friction doing work through this whole process is a little bit bigger than the x I'm trying to solve for. It's 40 centimeters bigger. So I had to give it a different symbol. And then how much energy is in the block at the end of this process? It's a stationary block, and there's an uncoiled spring. All our energy is gone. It's been sucked out by friction. OK. So I can work on solving for delta x here. May as well do it symbolically since I'm so close. So I have kx initial squared over 2fk. So I get 100.4 meter compression squared over 2 times 3.92 newtons. All right, let's smash these numbers. 100 times 0.4 squared divided by twice 3.92. And I get 2.04 for this. And again, that's the total slide distance from where I started to where I finished. But it's not exactly what I asked in my diagram, so I'm going to have to adjust this. What I asked for in my diagram was how far did it slide past the equilibrium position. So my x is going to be 2.04 meters minus the additional 40 centimeters that I counted, so 0.4 meters. So I end up with 1.64 meters for the slide past the equilibrium position.